Hello and welcome to TNT Sports, your home for NBA coverage. The NBA is truly a global game with most of its superstars actually residing from right here in Europe. And all of the sporting landscape and world will be fixated on this city, Paris, as we get ourselves ready to host the Summer Olympic Games. But here's a little bit extra excitement for you for this year. As we turn the year, the NBA Paris Games are ready. The Cleveland Cavaliers and the Brooklyn Nets are getting ready to entertain us all. So ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in and get yourselves ready for this NBA action. Here we go! The NBA Paris Games. Bonsoir à tous et bonsoir à tous. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you can feel the energy, right? That means we're in Paris. We get ourselves ready for another <laughs> NBA Paris Games. And I'm your host, JD Dye, and I'm here with this very special NBA preview show ahead of what's going to be an incredible evening of NBA Paris action. And if I'm going to be in Paris, there's only one person I should be with, which is Mr. Paris himself, <laughs> the extraordinary <laughs> Julien Laurent. And of course, you know what? I'm going to bring a little bit of style, a little bit of pizzazz, and a little bit of size as well. I have to include the former rookie of the year that is yeah. Mark Jackson. Look, more than anything else, gentlemen, I appreciate you both for being here. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate you both for blessing us and turning around and previewing what's going to be an incredible yeah. evening yeah. of NBA action. I just want to know from both of you, and probably more from yourself, how okay. excited are you to be back in Paris? Oh, I'm extremely excited. This is very <laughs> Like, what can I say? <laughs> and, like, I'm in royalty here. You know, I what see? else can I ask for? You know what I mean? I know, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, you know, hey, listen, you guys are incredible. I'm looking forward to a good show. I love the dominance and I love the greatness that we've seen so far in terms of the NBA. We can talk about how much of it being a global spectacle right now. But let's dive into some of the important things that happen every year, right? Let's talk about the MVP race, first of all. Now, I have a feeling when Mark's going to go with this. <laughs> I think I've seen the answer already. I have a feeling when Mark's going to go with this already. <laughs> but Julian, I'd love to know in terms of who you see as some of the front runners and who's impressed you at probably the halfway stage of the season so far. I mean, for me, there's one really outstanding contender, and that's AGA. For me, Shaggy just Alexander and what he's doing with OKC yeah. this season in mm -hmm. terms of leading that team mm -hmm. in a team that maybe doesn't have the support that an Embiid has yeah. or Yanis has or even Jokic, Jokic has. Yeah. Mm. HDF for me has been outstanding. His, his, his point tally to start with, the way he leads this team again, the way he carries this team. Yeah. I was impressed with his defending the steal that he has every game. I just think that there's, he took his game to another level and at that age, I've been really impressed. Absolutely. I, you know, that's a good one, but you know, we got to talk about the <laughs> nah, like nah, big fellas. You know, I mean, you got to get your well hands and knees. I, I just mean, bring a bit of flair to start with. <laughs> I like you bring the guard in there. Right? I mean, but I look at it, the MVP race as this. I, you look at Joel Embiid, Jokic, Giannis, you know, Luca. I mean, these guys yeah. are doing it extremely, extreme, but for me, it, it's Joel Embiid, man. He's just like unstoppable. He's unguardable. He's just once again putting the team on his back and most valuable player. When he's not in the lineup, they lose majority mm. of the games. Mm. So, you know, I think with Shea, when he's missed the game, he's still won. So I think Joel and me, Joel and me is still a VP. And, and you got to give respect to Jokic. Jokic, even when Murray was out, Jokic was still leading that yeah. team to victory. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm biased to my big fellas. Of course. But it deservedly so. But is he a more open race for the MVP this season, maybe, than previously, where he felt like Joel was going to win last season and that Jokic would win the, the seasons before? You know what's interesting about that? I, I would say it's. Because Joel, once again, has missed some yeah. games, yeah. he kind of opens the door for others' names to be discussed. Mm -hmm. But that's unfortunate for him, and it's better for others. Mm -hmm. The shade, what he's doing in Oklahoma City, is incredible. Yeah. But I also think, you know, Jokic, Giannis, you know, I think you can't go wrong. It's like, I hate to say this, you put a name in the hat, you pick it out this week. It could be anybody. Next week is something yeah, different sure. into what these teams are playing. You say the best quote to me all the time, and this is sometimes where we can give you a preview of some of the conversations we have yeah. behind the cameras. And you say the best ability is availability. Thank you very much. Availability is the best ability you can have. I don't care what your skill level is. The best ability is availability all the time. Yeah. Now, Julian, I don't want to upset Mark already, no, right? Because no, no, I want to get him yeah. onto the show. Yeah. But let's <laughs> let's talk about the wider basketball scale. We saw the FIBA tournament obviously last summer. Yeah. We saw exactly the shortcomings, we'll say, of yeah. the USA and Canada and Canada yeah. as well. So I just want to turn around and, and look at the wider perspective when you think about all of the candidates that are in the MVP. How happy are you to see so many diverse candidates from around the world? As the non-American here with you, yes. I mean, you are, you'll be a half and half. It's but you know, like, <laughs> I, I, there's two things. One, I think is great that the European influx to the league, and ca Canadians are slightly different, but still, because they're North Americans, but still, yes. 
That European influence, I think, is very beneficial for the NBA and mm -hmm. very good. I think there's a wider debate on the NCAA and mm. the, the way you form players, basketball yes, players, absolutely. in very much 1v1 situation mm -hmm. a lot. And if there's a bit more kind of ball playing skills to learn at a younger age in the US, certainly, mm -hmm. similar to what we do here in France or we do in Europe. Uh, so I think this is a good conversation to have. Could we have another MVP that is not American? I think this would be huge. Mm -hmm. Let's say if Joel, okay, Joel now is going to play for Team USA, but it's slightly different, but still he's not American per of course, se. Yeah. And I think if for another season after Yanis, after Jokic, after Joel again, even if Shea wins it, I think it shows that maybe the American are slowly falling a little bit behind maybe mm. what the rest of the world is doing. Like I said, no this, offense. This could I be mean, an open you're conversation. To your opinion. <laughs> you're to your opinion. Just saying. <laughs> but listen, but you're not wrong necessarily. I think the water's catching up. Mm. I think the, the, the game, the, the summer games, the Olympic games, they've shown that the world is not too far behind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Americans are falling behind. Nah, I was, I was, I was, I was talking to you. So, well, like that means, you know, Joel, Joel is, he's going to play for Team USA, which has to break a lot of French people's heart. Mm -hmm. That came out of nowhere. But also, but you look at, the, like you said, the diverse crowd, like the MVPs, Giannis, Jokic, Joel. Mm -hmm. You know, what can you say? And, and if you look at the, the race now, Jokic, Joel, in no particular order, Giannis, Shea, Luca, Luca, Luca. Um, Anthony yeah. Edwards is uh, high on there because of what he's the next level he's took. But the five out of six MVP, and MVP. And MVP. MVP. Yeah, at some point, yeah, at some point, he's yeah. not there yet. No, no, but no, he, no, he, he is there at some point. But you think about it, that's five out of six guys in the MVP race that, that are non Americans, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just letting you know how the world is catching up. The late great David Stone will be smiling right now, looking at the way that he had the vision yes. for the yeah. global games, yes. and now obviously, we're now pretty much living his fruition at this moment yes. in time. But since you just brought it up, it feels only right to move into Victor Wembanyama. Yeah. We're in Paris, we've seen the star power. Yeah. I'll give you a first-hand reference. Last year when we was in doing the Paris games, he walked into the building and he had a larger reception than Magic Johnson, yeah. than Pharrell, than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Genuinely, I was so shocked. I thought an, any, a genuine superstar had walked into the building, but that's what we have to reference yeah. him now. Yeah. Has he exceeded expectations from you? He's lived up to expectations, you know, and which is hard to do because it's, you know, everybody wants instant gratification. And I'm big on let the young guy develop. Don't don't put too much on him yet. And I was, I've had this argument last year, like, oh, he's going to be okay, but he needs a few years to adjust. No, 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 no. Mm. I think what was telling for me is in his draft speech, when in press conference, when he interviewed him, she said, you know, you're a little slight of frame. Do you think you need to get bigger and strong? He said, no, everybody else needs to get thinner. Mm. And I was like, mm. oh, yeah. that caught me. I was like, I like what he think. And he's proven, like, the biggest thing that's thinner, he has incredible skill to be so tall, but his motor, his heart is what has me fascinated. Mm. His, his ability to play hard every single night is the most important thing for me. We know number one overall picks don't always live up to the expectations. Yes. That's just a part of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from you, what you've seen skill set wise, ability wise, and what Mark just referenced to, the heart. Has he exceeded expectations yeah, for you? Yeah, I think he's been amazing, really. And I'm a bit frustrated and I think he's a little bit with the time they spend on the court yeah. because there's clearly restricted lim minutes from, from Popovich, which you can understand. Uh, but to be fair, Chet Holmgren also plays 29, 30 minutes yes. per game. Mm -hmm. Vasquez the same. So rookies. Yeah. Certainly this season tend to be in the same bracket as, as Victor. So I think he would like to play more. And sometimes I watch him after seven minutes in the first quarter, he's back on the bench and I'm like, well, come on. Yeah. So I find that a bit frustrating. However, he's just below 20 points mark. He's mm. three, three blocks per game. He's defending, he's getting better and better. Yeah. And the skill set is just something we've never seen before. Absolutely. I mean, against the Bucks and Yanis, and Yanis was so impressed. And I think this is mm. also how you can judge a young player, is what the opposition players say about him. Yes. And to hear Yanis being so full of praises for Wemby, which is great, and you know, that, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. The best part about this is we get to hold the analysts to their words. So I'm gonna ask for a prediction, even at this stage, <laughs> rookie of the year. Are we turning around and saying that Wemby is going to be the, is he the front runner at this oh, moment yeah. in time? And will he win the award? I mean, shout out to Chet Holmgren, who's also in very much in that. Jaime is doing great things down in Miami. I, I, when you talk about uh, rookie of the year, I think Chet is, is, Chet is, is slightly leading because his team is winning. Yeah, mm. his team is And they do take that into, they do take that in fact that 
if your team is playing better and you get major contributor to that, they're going to kind of give you that edge. So as now, I think it's a 1A and a 1B mm -hmm. uh, with, with me, maybe 1B right now. Although I think the hype is so high, so big around him. Agree. That, which it that should might, be. Yeah, which it, which should, it should, be. should be. That might play a bit of a part of yeah. you know, where people vote and that kind of stuff. Two teams that have had an indifferent start to their campaigns in the Eastern Conference so far. When you talk about indifferent campaigns, though, look no further than the Detroit Pistons. To say they're struggling is an understatement. <laughs> We've seen the historical references that they're being associated with and could end up with the worst record in league history. I know. Take that's a deep breath. Bad teams. That's, 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 <laughs> that is bad. That's that bad is teams. bad. Um, I, I kind of take a deep breath and I look at that Detroit roster and I think to myself, the first question I'd ask is looking at that talent, looking at the coaching staff that they have, yeah. why do Detroit find themselves in this position right now? Uh, you know, they have some very good, talented young players, but I always say young plus young equals losing. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have a, some veterans, they have their, their, their full power forward there, who's, you know, the European. Yeah, Bogdanovich, yeah. But he's doing well. He's, he's a guy, but they need more of him. You can't just have one, <laughs> unfortunately, with that. And, you know, Monty's a great coach. Monty's a good friend of mine, so I want to bash the program too much. But the NBA is on the verge of you have to be able to shoot the ball. They have a lot of one-on-one -on -one talent, a lot of defense. They don't have enough shooters. And as you can tell with their record with three wins as currently, that's, that's the recipe for disaster. I think what's so interesting about this more than anything else, when I think about the 3 one free, it's heart, determination, grit. That's everything that's been associated with Detroit throughout their whole yeah. history. Yes. The Detroit fans right now will be screaming, what about our bad boy Pistons? We've been yeah. NBA yeah. champions. Yeah, 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 sure. So how does a franchise like that with so much history find themselves in this position? It's a really good question. I agree with Mark on the youth. Maybe it's too much. When you look at yeah. Cunningham and Ivy, yeah. and Hayes, Stewart, they're all 20, 21, 22. Even Bogdanovich, 34, and a few others. Maybe it's not enough. And I think once you start having that negative mindset of losing, because yeah. they started 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two yes. one. That's what's crazy about two it. Two wins. Obey yes. against the Bulls and the Hornets, I think it it's was. Still a win. He got a win. win. But still wins. Still, still wins. Win. Two and one, and then you lose 28 in a row. 28. Yeah. So I think when that kind of negative spiral starts, Gets then I think, especially with a young team like that, and yeah. as good as Monty is as a coach, I think it's difficult to get out. I agree. I think it's important that you give us the reference, because you know Monty well, as you say. Yes. Your peers, your basketball lifers, both of you. Yes. How would he be adjusting right now into what he's seeing with it's the Detroit It's kind of difficult. Team? It's a difficult, you know, and then as him as a coach, you know, basketball is life. So for him to, to put into, I'm supposed to help this team win, we know we have a pass because we're rebuilding, but still it aches him here because he's a winner. Mm. He's a winner in life and then basketball. So for him, it's like, what can I do to help these young guys? Because you know, a lot of times how a young person start it depends on it, it also trajectory of their career. So he's like, I can't let these kids have this losing mindset. What can I do? So he's reaching all different angles. But I really believe they have to, it's going to be hard for them to find a ways to win without some older guys on their team, yeah. without some shooting. So they got to take their lumps. Were you surprised that he took the job? Because last season they were he not very good either. Yes. So he turned it down a yeah. couple of times first, and then they came with this lucrative contract. He mm -hmm. said, okay. But like, still he's sitting there like this, darn, maybe I, I should have rethought that. But he's in the, the, the mind of, of molding minds mm. and molding players. So he'll be like, you know what, okay, I got to turn it around. And it's never too late though, it's yeah, never too yeah. late. It is never too late. Someone else has turned in their season around, probably in a negative way though, is the LA Lakers. Now, I smile because <laughs> obviously you know the Lakers are always going to be a headline regardless, every yes. single NBA season. And congratulations to LeBron James, 39 years old, Good. making it look incredible as he does. <laughs> but we need to look at what the Lakers are doing on the floor right now. Since mm. the in-season tournament and they're lifting that banner into the, <laughs> into the rafters in the crypto.com arena. Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got it right. Um, it just doesn't seem to be working. It doesn't seem to be gelling as we go towards the trade deadline. Yeah, I think they've struggled since that in-season tournament to regain their form. And maybe they are those, that kind of team where on a regular season, they have highs and downs, maybe more downs than highs. Mm -hmm. But then when, as we saw last season in the playoffs, when they went to the conference finals, mm -hmm. when that kicks on, then that's where the A game comes yes. out, maybe. Yeah. Because they've had injuries, they're not shooting well, especially at three points, but they are super competitive. And I would not put it past them that once the playoffs start, 
they're going to be there and, they, and we're going to see a completely different Lakers team. I think that's very possible. I don't, I see, this is for me where you can turn around and give me the insight okay. because every NBA player that I've spoken to, every single vet that I've spoken to says, you can't just turn this on and off when you feel like. So we saw the intensity that they gave in the in-season tournament. We saw them obviously win the in-season tournament, go undefeated in the in-season yeah. tournament. Mm -hmm. How does that now translate to the form that we're seeing right now with the Lakers? So I agree with you. The Lakers are not built for the regular season because they have LeBron James, who's mm -hmm. arguably the GOAT when you think of uh, NBA legends. But if you put LeBron and AD in any seven game series, you'll see a whole different player. Like you've seen that in the, in the tournament yeah. where they played incredibly and then their role players played their roles. Mm. Yeah, I know Turian Prince, uh, Cam Reddish, these guys are getting negative feedback now, but these guys are really good ballers when surrounded with greatness. And LeBron and AD is that. So they just have to maintain 10th or above and then when the playoff come, you'll see them create a lot of havoc. Are they still going to be a threat when it comes to the playoffs? I mean, it's a completely different roster to mm -hmm. what it was in terms of that went to the Western Conference Finals last year. But you still have the main components, which is, of yeah. course, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So are they still going to be a threat? I think so, man. Especially if AD stays fit. And LeBron to a certain extent, but LeBron is a freak of nature physically. This is just, we've never yeah. seen anything like that before. I think when we get to the end of this regular season, nobody would want to face them. Whatever exactly. they finish, exactly. 10th, 9th, eight, eight, whatever, I don't think anybody would want to face them. Exactly. In true Paris style, and we've turned around and left the main event for, of course, this moment right Right here, which is the preview of the game. Yes. Cavs versus the Nets. We're excited to just be in Paris to turn around and do what we do every single year, bringing the NBA to a global arena. Mm -hmm. I think the fans at home will be so excited to turn around and see a tip that's going to be in their regulation, their time zone. They can turn around and go to sleep <laughs> yeah. whenever, when it feels good for you, right? <laughs> um, so let's dive into this game because I, I built it already and I said to you, as two teams that's had an indifferent start to their sort of campaigns. Let's talk about maybe the Cavs first, who are finding a little bit of form maybe at this stage of the season. What has impressed you about the Cleveland so far? The impressed me about Cleveland is they have not been healthy. You know, Garland, uh, Mitchell cannot stay healthy together. They mm -hmm. only played about 15 to, to games together. If they can play together, they'll win more. And then you got the front court. You know, they got the, the tallest front court <coughs> in the league, and they're young, and they're doing good things, but they got to stay healthy. The best ability yeah. is availability. availability. Yeah, again. And, and you know, but the, because Donovan Mitchell is such a dynamic playmaker and scorer, and then you got their front court, who's arguably the two best defensive guys in the league. They're able to steal some wins until they can get healthy. Me and Mark had a great conversation yesterday. I'd love to get your insight into And this was, again, a preview of the things that we turn around and speak about off camera that we're yes. now bringing to on set. He spoke about these two bigs that you don't really see a lot in the league right now. A lot of people are doing this one and four in terms of space and trying yeah. to create as much space for shooting as possible in the league. But Cleveland have Jarrett Allen and Evan Mobley. Yeah. When it's turned and everything's working well, they're the two starting bigs that they want to turn and implement on the floor. Yeah. Completely. How do you look at this sort of setup in Cleveland? I mean, Mobley is injured now, which is a big shame for them. Yes. And we expect him to come back. It won't be too long, I think, that knee injury that he had. But I saw Jarrett Allen against Wembanyama going yes. back to Wembley mm -hmm. in the last game. And you watch them and you say, okay, this is all you have to learn when being. And Jared Allen is not the most, the, 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 the biggest no. veteran or experience, but he, he, he really got on top because of everything that he learned in that league. And I think Jared Allen is a wonderful, he's an all-star player to start with. Mm -hmm. He's a great talent. And I've been a bit surprised they've underachieved so far this season. And yet, you're right, injuries, I think they've only played their, their starting lineup 11 times, 11 mm -hmm. games this season mm -hmm. because there have been injuries to a yep. few of them. But I, I still thought in that roster there's so much talent that they should yeah. be better than where they are right now. Well, we switch now to the Brooklyn Nets. And when you turn around and talk about people that are basketball lifers, people that are great personalities in the league, look no further than Jacques Vaughn. Yeah. I, I genuinely smile every time because if you have an opportunity to meet Jacques Vaughn at any point and you see the smile on your face yeah. already, you already know he leaves an impression on you straight yeah. away. So what impression has he given you so far as he's taken this head coaching role and now making the Brooklyn Nets his own? So the thing about Jacques Vaughn, I've been playing against Jacques Vaughn since, since high school and college. And we were teammates with the Nets, ironically. And I seen him as a player, and he was always straight, straight-laced guy, serious face, but he enjoyed the game. He gave his heart to it. He gave his passion. He gave his all. Never made excuses. And that's all he wants. He wants no excuses from anyone. Let me give you a reasonable ask, and can you do it? And if you can, we flourish. And I really think the players will fight for him. Once again, mm. if they can get healthy, they need one piece and they need a point guard, our true point guard, mm. and then they will start excelling. 
What he just made reference to, a true point guard. Is that yeah. the only piece that you think that the Brooklyn Nets are missing at this moment in time? I just wonder if there's a bit more to be done. Uh, I mean, there's Ben Simmons to start with. I mean, what's going on? To I mean, why is it? I mean, we don't have the time anyway. Stop one for now. No, no, <laughs> it, it makes perfect reference to the quote that we said at the top of the show. What's exactly. the best ability? Again, we go by. <laughs> and he's the point guard referring yeah, exactly. to. Exactly. 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 I mean, you can't rely on him anyway, just physically, exactly. even Agreed. mentally, probably. Then you do wonder how this roster was built because if you look at Johnson, Thomas, Dean Windy, and Bridges, they're all similar. I know they can play they're different positions. Exactly. Yep. And all they're all wings. the same height and they, all, and they have similar skill sets still. So I'm looking at it and I think like even with all the goodwill, great coaching staff, everything, I'm just not sure how far they can go. But you know, mm -hmm. let me direct on that. The, the, the key is a lot of teams are moving that way. They want long perimeter defenders and they have that. Do they have enough legitimate shooting? That's a question, yeah. but I think Bridges and other guys are finding their way. Are you enjoying watching the accelerated roles, the more touches that your Cam Johnson is getting, your, your Mikael Bridges are getting now? Mm -hmm. We say it all the time, whether or not you want to turn around and be a troll in the timeline and say, oh, this person's a scrub. Everybody in the NBA can ball. Oh, so yeah. now you're turning around yeah. and seeing <laughs> it and they're getting those extra touches. Are you seeing the growth in their game? You see it, not as quickly as I thought it would be. I thought this, I thought this team could do really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just a bit disappointed again. And I think they're going to make the play, play in probably. I'm not sure about the playoffs straight away. And that'll be fine because, again, we saw with the Lakers and the Heat, although they have more experience and experienced players and experience overall mm -hmm. of, of success, that you can go far still by starting in the play-in at the end of the season. However, I think there's something missing. And, and I think Nick Claxton is a, is a really good center. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think Darren Sharp, who's injured now but will come back soon, is a good backup center. Mm -hmm. But it feels there's something not there. It's something missing, really. I like the point guard and maybe a bit of winning mentality, too. Yeah. When you think about how closely contested it was, I think back, back to their regular season game, I think it was in October. It was only a single point, single possession. It came right down to the wire. Mm. It probably shows how closely contested this game will be, hopefully, when it comes out on Thursday. So what are you expecting when you look at how this is going to shape Listen, up? Listen, I look at, you talk about the opportunities. I look at Mikel Bridges coming from Phoenix. Phoenix, he was kind of like the second, third option. He was more of a defensive guy. Mm. But he, when he got to the Nets, he said, no, I'm a scorer as well. And he takes it personally to guard the other team's best scorer. Then I look at Donovan Mitchell, who's a dynamic playmaker and scorer. I'm looking for, he said, oh, we in Perry? Oh, I need to show out. <laughs> so he's, gonna, he's like, we, we need to show yeah. out. And, he's gonna say, and now Mikel Bridges, who's coming off a 42-point game yeah. last game, he's like this, I know Donovan Mitchell is going to try to go off. I'm on a big stage. I need to show that I'm a star. And this where games like this where stars mm -hmm. come out to play. And look for Donovan Mitchell and Bridges to really go at it. When you think about what he's just saying there, the game within the game, right? Yes. The battles that's happening on the floor that sometimes you don't even get privy to unless you're sitting there and you can hear what they're saying. Yes. What's the one-on-one -on -one battle that you're looking forward to the most? I mean, it's hard to look outside of that one because I think a two-way player like Mika Bridges is going gonna, is gonna to really release the opportunity to go at Donovan Mitchell. And I think the Nets needs to... to, to They've, they've lost 11 and 14 now, so they yeah. need to start a good winning run. And I think Paris, the best city in the world. This is the perfect <laughs> place, I had to say it before we finished. Yes. Best city in the world, that's where your winning streak starts if you're the Nets. Well, we're going to end it right there. Paris, the best city in the world. And this has been your NBA preview wrap up. Like, thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate My guys, you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Mike. Julian. I appreciate you. And make sure you stay with us because 6 30 Thursday it is your time, right? The NBA tip that you've been waiting for, the NBA Paris game on TNT Sports 1 and Discovery Plus. We'll see you there. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. about Coming that. In. Flex. I just want to win. Yeah. The Cavaliers are starting to find their rhythm, find their stride. Mark. Goodness, that young man climbed the ladder on that one. I just switched the lanes. Switch, switch. Damn, he did it again. Take a lesson.